Hi there, welcome back to Table Tennis Chats. Uh, I'm Mark, player coach from Kainsham. Uh, and today I'm speaking with uh, someone who I know very, very well. Um, we've played in the same team for a couple of years. Well, Dave, I'll let you do your uh, formal introduction. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, you, you, you've had the privilege of playing with me for uh, a few years, I think now. So um, from in the leagues to also battle the paddle as well, the social stuff. So um, yeah, and I've, I've probably been there now since uh, I was about 12 and I'm now old enough to forget my age, basically 42. So, uh, yeah, a few years. Yeah, fair play, Dave. So what I wanted to ask, first of all, was kind of how did you first um, come about the sport? How did you first sort of pick up a bat and sort of start playing to get to where you are now sort of thing? Yeah, uh, annoyingly, I was going to show you a trophy, but I cannot find it. I've been up in the loft everywhere. But um, basically, I started playing at Boys Brigade um, when I was about 11 or 12, I think. And they actually had um, into sort of club leagues for table tennis but the standard was pretty low um but uh yeah because we had i think a couple of league players um in the bath league i think they're, they're basically coached us a little bit and we uh yeah we were pretty good basically and and uh seemed to always win the single competitions and the doubles and everything like that but um but yeah that's how i got into it basically it's all i guess anything from from 12 to about 13 14. And so was that um, in sort of Kainsham Bath area or was it a little bit further afield? Uh, no, Kainsham. Um, yeah, so it was, it was uh, uh, Kainsham first Boys Brigade really. <laughs> for anybody out there that remembers Boys Brigade. But um, but yeah, so uh, that was it really. And then from there, from age about 14, 15, I think, we started, one of the guys used to play for the Key Centre, which is obviously where I play now still. Um, and yeah, and uh, yeah, took us down there basically, and I think we were—I can't remember if we were one of three teams or one of two. But um, yeah, we started off in whatever the bottom league was then. But I think there were about four leagues or five leagues then, I think from memory. Yeah, and yeah, typical sort of fourteen, fifteen-year-olds. Everything you get, you smash, and and that's about it. <laughs> but it was a uh, good fun though. Well, it's good to hear that you haven't changed your playing style then. So that's no, great. no, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was probably more accurate when I was, I was, I was quicker around the table anyway at that age, so you can do that. <laughs> and so did you um, did you go off and sort of study or sort of leave the sport for a little while and come back? Or was it always consistently playing throughout? Um... Uh, yeah, I pretty much stopped, I think, when I did. I can't remember if I stopped at A-levels, but I certainly stopped when I went to university. So it's probably had about a, a five, six year gap, I suspect, um, but before I got back into it. And uh, one of the guys I used to play with was still playing for the key centre, so um, um, in, in the Bath League. So that's what got me back into it, basically, uh, when they were short. But yeah, and I've been there ever since. So uh, I don't know how many years that is, actually. I'll probably have to try and wear that out, but there's quite a lot of years, um, probably nearer 20 years, I suspect, I'm playing for the key. So, um, yeah. That's, that's um, excellent. Yeah. And so, a, few, a few, year, few years away from retirement, I imagine, as well, looking yeah. at some of the players. So. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's all good. Well, I think you're probably still in that youngish tier for for our league. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in the youth squad at the moment, <laughs> pretty much for that for that league. So uh, yeah. And so, has it always <laughs> been? Have, have you always played like around the sort of Division Two, Division One sort of standard, or have you ever got into the Premier League at any point? Uh, no, sadly not. Thanks, Mark, for bringing that up. But no, <laughs> I, I, I think basically the, the teams that we've played in has always been. Um, I, I think I'm a second or first division really um, standard and doing the usual sort of you jump up one division maybe have a season or if you're lucky two there and then you, you end up going back down basically which is a bit of a shame but uh, um, but never never quite got to play in the Prem I've done a few little uh, a few little forays into that and that is a big jump in standard um, and I think if, if you ever wanted to play in the Prem I'd actually have to um, practice <laughs> um, but I'd actually I'd actually play two or three times a week because it's that, it's that kind of standard really up in the Prem so um, um, and at the moment I've got no chance of doing that so uh, but yeah you never know see what happens I'll have to get some coaching from you Mark and I'll oh, be, uh... I don't know about that <laughs> I mean I'm, we're going to come on to your sort of favourite or best moment in table tennis so I think I could probably almost already guess that one um, from last season but um, I'll let you tell it but um, do you actually sort of no any pathway um, further than the sort of Premier League, you know, in Bath, anything 
you know, sort of county, national, or anything like that? Uh, not really, to be honest. Um, I mean, I've not, I've not massively gone looking for it, but then at the same time, you don't really get, um, you don't get anything else, really. You don't get anybody coming to you, really. So um, I, I think that's probably one thing they could improve on, really. It's just um, maybe send something round to the, to the lower, lower teams and say, look, this is coming up, you know, free entry to this or whatever, or you can come and watch the, the Prem finals or whatever it is that's going on. Um, would be would be useful to know, uh, definitely. Yeah, that's a that's a good suggestion actually. With um, yeah, just the spectator element of it for sort of county or GPs etc. No, that's really good. Um, yeah, so, yeah. And so so we come on to your um, I'll call it your favourite or your best moment in uh, table tennis. I mean, you can do more than <laughs> one. There's a funny story, but um, we can gloss over certain um, results from last season if you like, or you can tell people about it. Yeah, there's quite a few. I'll probably gloss, gloss over from last season, apart from yours. <laughs> I think you. Uh, I don't know how many points you got, uh, but uh, but yeah, no, we had a good match, didn't we? Really, but um, uh, yeah, I was able to smash everything. Unfortunately, I think when we played uh, last season, so um, they got a bit of a cracking result there. Three nine. Um, yeah, very much. Yeah, I enjoyed that. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, but it's quite interesting actually. I, don't, I haven't actually. I should have looked beforehand, but I think we're always in the last few seasons. I think we're with pretty much on the same percentage, aren't we? Or within a couple of points of each other. So, um, not that I look too much, but uh, I, I, do, <laughs> I do like to try and stay ahead a little bit. Yeah, so that was pretty good. I don't know if I've got any other any like funny stories really or anything like that. There's quite a lot of um, what's well, quite nice playing with the team. There's quite a lot of banter in between the team. So. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, sort of yeah, just have a laugh really, um, and obviously with all the lockdown going on, uh, you miss a bit of that. But um, um, but yeah, really enjoyable time really playing with the key centre and in the league generally really. Well, yeah, I mean some of my sort of favourite times um, are with sort of you, Matt, and Sue. You know that sort of nucleus of the team we had was um, made it really enjoyable to turn up, whether it be Thursday night over in Yatton Kennel or you know a league game you know at home or you know, down over yeah. the park, anywhere like that, you know, kind of the camaraderie that us four had um, and interchanging the team was um, was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a really good laugh and a nice nice setup we, we, we've had there and and still really with the different teams. So, um, yeah, it's been been really good. And so have you got any sort of standout, it's, it's hard to say, but sort of like worst moments or moments where you, you couldn't quite believe what happened on or off the table sort of thing? Uh, probably most weeks. Really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I sort of I average I don't know about uh, about thirty three forty percent at the moment, something like that. So, um, um, but yeah, I don't know. I I, I played some. Uh, I think the Premier player is always fun. Um, we do the handicap um, competitions and various things like that. And the, the amount of times I've come up against a player, and I, you know, bear in mind I've been playing for a few years, and I, and I, I think I could hold a rally a little bit, but. Um, yeah, you start off 13 nil or you know 15 nil ahead of them, um, and you just see that you just see that score disappear basically, and then you lose. You know, you get like one or two lucky edges, and that's about it. But um, yeah, so I think those are quite um, yeah quite interesting evenings, really. Yeah, I had a moment like that against uh, young Josh Cashdan in one of the um, competitions a couple of years ago when I was starting about, you know, 13 points up, you know, up to 21. And yeah, I, did, I couldn't get near the guy. It's just, it's unbelievable. No, it's just demoralising, isn't it, really? Um, especially when you've been playing for a little while. And, you know, he'd like to think you at least get something out of it. But no, <laughs> just shows what the standard is, really, at that level. So um, Yeah. It's all part of the game, really, isn't it? You know, learning and improving. You know, everyone's different at the end of the table, aren't they? So it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's nice to play against that standard as well. Um, so um, yeah, that's a yeah a, a nice feature of the game, really, is that they can do competitions like that, and it does mix the leagues up a little bit, which is quite nice. Definitely, and um, sort of spitballing off of some of that, um, and your sort of ambitions for for next season. I know that you know key centre that we play. You're in the A team. I was in the B team. Um, and I, you haven't mentioned so far, but we finished above you last season. Um, but well, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's a lockdown. That's what that's what that's what that was. I'll blame it on that. That, that was just for Ken, that was just for Ken's amusement if he's watching. Um, <laughs> but no, I just wondered what your sort of um, ambitions or, or plans were for next season. Um, you know, do you set any sort of goals or targets or anything like this? Uh, only to be ahead of you, really. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. But no, I, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to um, 
we 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 um, moved up last season, so obviously staying in staying in that league was important, and I think staying in it again, um, but also trying to get up near the top because I think potentially we could uh, if we're consistent. We had at um, the start of the season we had two or three different players mixing around, um, um, so we had quite a big squad really. So, um, but I think next season we're probably going to be a bit more. Um, just have three consistent players, I guess. So um, hopefully we should see what we'll be able to do uh, when it's just the three of us, basically, or, or maybe four. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think uh, some of my B team players, I think we can possibly put one up into the A team if needed and then, yeah, jump yeah. out the other two teams. But Yeah, yeah well, both our, both our A and our B teams, as you know, are pretty much the similar standard, really. I mean, like you said, you finished above us. And it, you know, to be honest, it could go either way, could it? I think there was... I think the first game we played against you, I, 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 which is the one I actually played, and I think it was a draw. It was um, a draw, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's pretty close, really. So, um, But to have us both up there, hopefully, playing for near the top would be quite nice next season. Yeah, no, exactly. It's all about the recruitment policy, see who we're going to bring in, and, and obviously when the season's going to start, because at the minute it's probably still a little bit up in the air as to when we can start playing again, and, you know, whether that would be doubles included or no doubles. So. Yeah, lots yeah. of things juggling. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky start, I think, to the season when they're able to actually get it going, really. But that's the same with a lot of sports, I think. But with, with table tennis, obviously, we're indoors. So, um, predominantly, anyway, um, which adds an extra there of complication, I suspect. I was going to think maybe we can um, do a battle of the paddle style and, um, you know, have our home venue as one of the outside tables in Bristol. That'd be um, pretty good. Home advantage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if there's a bar there, that might help um, as well. So, um, yeah, I'll be up for that. <laughs> might, exactly. might be a bit tricky in October. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll make it work. But um, that's the other thing we haven't um, touched on yet, is actually um, when we sort of first found out about Battle of the Paddle, um, I drafted you in pretty quickly to go and sort of play in that. I mean, it kind of leads on to the more serious question of how we sort of re- retain more young people in sport, because from what I observed with Battle of the Paddle is that everyone was social, was having a laugh and a few beers, but there are actually some quite good players in their 20s and 30s there because I think that's the age group that we're missing, certainly in Bath. I mean, have you got any sort of thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that was pretty interesting because there was, like you said, there's some good players there and there were at least two, I think, that were pretty decent um, league players uh, when they were 14, 15, um, maybe even a county player, I think, one of them, and, and they drop out. Um, for various reasons, you know, they go off to university or whatever, um, and then they come back a few years later, which is quite nice. But um, yeah, I think anything that keeps it going, really. So uh, I think the stuff that, that you're doing at the moment, down at um, Cabaret's and the the actual uh, bringing on the uh, the key centre youth team, as I call it. But uh, basically, well, I must admit, when I when I first heard you were setting that up on a Friday night, I didn't think. Um, you'd get many people down there, but it's been a, a cracking success, basically. So um, that's, a, that's a great job done. And there's, I don't know how many people go down there now, but it's well, well into double figures that you're getting down every week. Um, and uh, my own you know, my own uh, daughter comes down with me occasionally, and uh, she's only seven, but she, she'll have a little go on the table when everybody else is gone. Uh, so, you know, she, she'll hopefully get into that um, that way as well, because it's a really sociable thing, really. Yeah, so I think it's maybe we need to bring a more of a sort of social element to sort of league play, possibly, you know, make the bottom league a little less serious, potentially. I'm just, you know, running off ideas, really, at the moment. Yeah, let's get the younger ones in. I mean, I, um, obviously, I said I started through Boys Brigade and the fact that somebody was in the league um, and he basically trained us up a little bit. Um, but you could do the same thing at schools, you know, easily. Um, you, could, uh, you could ask a couple of local comprehension schools if they want to put a team of two or three in. And uh, I think in the Bath League, they've actually, uh, one of the teams they, they arranged that would only ever play home matches, um, just so the, youngest didn't, the youngster ones didn't have to, uh, to to travel very much, which is quite um, considerate of them and worked out quite well. So you could easily you know, try and get a, you know, a school team set up, potentially. Even if it's not the same players, you could have them swapping players every week. It just gets them involved in the game, really. Um, but I think I think kids like to play younger kids as well so I mean it's yeah if you can get more than one in that's that would be ideal yeah that was kind of how um I got into table tennis um up at Culver Hay um sort of table tennis club I guess um it was a Thursday night I think it was 
after school and you just go there, play table tennis. And then we managed to get in the league with a sort of Bath junior team. And then we have to, they, we had to sort of finish our games by sort of nine o'clock. And it was always um, the home venue rather than home and away. So yeah, those, uh, okay. those ideas definitely work. Yeah. Cause um, you know, it's got at least one of those players or two actually Phil Smith came through that, that same system. So two of us are still playing into our uh, third. Okay. So, yeah. No, it was good. Uh, and also, pretty- the, the other really tricky question I've asked everyone else is how do we get more sort of women and girls involved in the sport? Because I think I counted up, I think there's only six in the three leagues that um, we have in Bath. Yeah, that's tricky. Isn't it? I think, pro- oh, like all sports, I mean, promoting uh, women in sports is important anyway, um, so that, you know, uh, the youngsters can see that, that the women are playing just as well as, as, as men, basically, because there's most posters or anything advertising, it tends to have men playing that sport so I think anything um to, to change that a little bit could help and and I think getting them, getting them into schools really uh, not just for, for for girls but for also for the boys as well um on just getting them into the, the sports halls and that kind of thing that, that allows kids to actually play the, play with a table tennis one that's actually you know the weather's not very good um and you can easily have I, I don't think table tennis is in any of the sports uh, GCSE. I don't think they. I don't think um, um, I can remember doing it at school or anything. But um, you could easily have, you know, I, I get football, rugby, and cricket. But you could easily have, you know, one session a term or something where they just did, you know, w- one game of table tennis, maybe with some basketball there or something like that in in the gym to just show them different sports. Basically, um, I think that would help just generate a bit of interest. Yeah, because um, that, that's that's quite interesting because Tim Cahill had this sort of same answer because he said that the more um, trendy sports, you know, like rugby, football, hockey, those sorts of things get more attraction, more attention at schools. And certainly I found I went to Beach and Cliff in Bath, an all-boys school, and, you know, sort of um, rugby, cricket, hockey, uh, football were the main sports. Um, and I think table tennis, we played one game against Culver Hay throughout my whole seven years I was there. So, you know, of table tennis. So that sort of shows how um, how little attention potentially it gets. So, yeah, certainly a big bit of work to do with um, local committees and local authorities, really, to try and try and twist the knob and change that a little bit to to bring it back around. Well, yeah, because they've obviously most secondary schools or even primary schools have got their own halls. So, and a table tennis table is pretty easy to fit into one of those and put away when you're not using it. So, um, it's surprising they haven't got more in them. I can't even remember. But it was a while ago I was at school, but I, I can't remember if they had a table test table in the hall. I, I know up at the local school wells where they've got two, I think, outside table test tables, which is quite nice for kids to have a, have a go at lunchtime. But I don't know if they've got any in the hall or anything like that. So, um, yeah, anything like that just helps, like that, I guess, market and, and show people what other sports are out there, not just football and cricket and that kind of thing. Yeah, as good I, as they are. Yeah, because I kind of liked it because it was like an alternative sport for me. It's something that I could make my own, you know. It wasn't something that, you know, anyone could take away from me or belittle me for. It was something that I could do, you know, uh, yeah. as as my own sort of entity, really. So, you know, for people that aren't that sporty, it's probably quite a good sport to introduce them, you know, into moving around and getting off the Xbox a bit more, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm still working on getting off the Xbox with my son, but um, <laughs> uh, I think my daughter's quite in, in, quite uh, like I said, quite keen on potentially table tennis. So um, uh, and sport generally, so anything really to to, to um, encourage him will help. Excellent, should be in our like little five to ten year plan for Key Centre. Then that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you signed her up already. Yeah, yeah, yeah free contract. Form. <laughs> yeah. I'll come around yours in a minute. <laughs> yeah, set up a table, be good. Yeah, and I guess the 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 only other thing I had to sort of ask is whether you had any um any questions for me because I kind of wanted to make these chats a bit more two way if you like and um just like we used to you know when we used to drive over from Yat and Kennel late at night you know after hopefully winning a massive <laughs> game you have a lot Probably. of banter in the in the car sort of thing so have you got any questions that um you know you want to ask me really um well probably around the, the the local club that you do really I mean that's how is that then obviously with the lockdown you can't get down there but um are you hoping to get set up again soon well yeah i mean this is the million dollar question that everyone's been asking me throughout the the summer um you know until the government come out with some clear um guidelines which so far um they haven't 
you know, in probably all aspects of their press releases so far, but we won't get into mm-hmm. politics too much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of having that clear plan as to when it's safe to, to go out and, you know, listen to scientists and the, you know, and the panels to, to make that decision. Um, yeah, it definitely will start up again. You know, I was a bit disappointed with the last um, release, you know, sort of saying that sort of pubs and stuff can open, which obviously Somerdale has the bar next to it. So potentially you can go to the bar, but you can't then go over to the other room and play table tennis. So it's a bit deflating in that respect, um, unless we all just drink and kind of set up a table. But yeah, it'd be a bit cheeky. But, <laughs> you know, my paramount yeah. you know, concern is to to keep everyone fit and healthy because, you know, the age ranges are, are quite vast in my club, you know, from 12 to 84 and everybody in between there. So, yeah, kind of, I I really want to get going again with table tennis, but yeah, when it's mm. kind of safe to do so, really. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that's, you, you mentioned about the ages there. I mean, that is, I think, probably something quite special about table tennis and the fact that you can get 12-year-olds playing their granddad. Um, and they and they could you know, and their granddad can beat them, um, and, you know, and be quite competitive. So um, I think that's quite a good aspect of the game and uh, and of the youth club really as well uh, that you can yeah. do that. But um, but yeah, it'd be great to get that that club going again because you've done a, a great job there now. Oh well, yeah, what I like to see is when the sort of people in their fifties, sixties, or seventies, etc., start giving you know banter back to the to the kids. We get quite a lot of that. Get quite a lot of characters in our club who who will, you know, chat football, you know, Spurs or Bristol City or whoever, yeah, yeah. you know, with the kids. And, you know, then it's all a level playing field for all the people, you know, who are sitting out chatting and stuff. So, you know, I think that's kind of brought out a, a lot of people out of their shell, really, with um, some of the younger ones that we've got. And also yeah. on the flip side of that, some of the more rowdy teenagers when they came, now they're a bit more calm around, you know, older people. They don't need to puff up their chest and be the best in the room because, you know, now they've they've had that level sort of banter with other people. So, you know, it's not so um, you know, important for them to sort of play yeah. up act up if you yeah. know. Yeah, I definitely agree with that as well, because it's getting kids to mix with with older generations is, is difficult. And I think table tennis does do that. So um and, and like you said, kids can learn a lot from just being more comfortable and, and have more confidence around older people. Um and actually chatting to people that they probably wouldn't have done otherwise. Yeah. And uh, you know, and to be fair, I mean, um, I've got a lot of time for for other sports. You know, football and, and rugby are, are absolutely fantastic, but they don't, you know, they don't quite mix in that same way. So I think that's quite unique about the sport. Um, they're actually going to be playing, you know, people that have been playing, you know, 40, 50 years, um, and they can have a chat to them about anything really. So that's quite nice. Well, yeah, and also like you say about playing family members. You know, I've played my dad quite a few times in the league now, and. Um... You know, so from when I was a kid, when I couldn't beat the guy to to now, where I can beat him, you know, quite quite comfortably. So it's kind of flipping that um, sort of generational gap as well, isn't it? And you know, empowering the, you know the kids a little bit more, if you like. You know, not like my kid anymore, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> taking a while to actually beat him. But no, but then you know, you're more on a level playing field because you can chat more. You know, if there's a bar there, you can have a drink and chat one on one more with um you know with older people. So yeah, it's a lot not better feeling really to have that social element mixed in with that little bit of competitive competitiveness uh, that we all like really yeah yeah, yeah definitely uh, yeah like I, said, I think that's one of the unique bits of the sport really which is where it can get yeah that, that element can get overlooked really but it, it should be something that should be encouraged as a sport definitely yeah um and you know what what we're going to do with Kingsham table tennis club which i forgot to mention uh, a minute ago was um i've got the idea to sort of put on potentially a Saturday or a Sunday session, a bit more geared towards improvement and coaching and bits and pieces like this. So, you know, we've got, we've got a couple of level one coaches in the Bath area now, and we've got a level two coach as well, and Brendan, who's doing good work in like the Bath schools and universities, et cetera. Um, yeah. So there's potentially room to sort of bring on not just the kids, but, you know, the adults as well to um, get a quality knock rather than and do some drills rather than just playing games all the time. So, yeah, watch this space when we when it's safe to open because that's something that we'll be trying in and, you know, getting more focused on improvement, really. So, you know, we might yeah. make the Premier League yet, you know? Who knows? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a good idea because I, uh, yeah, the thing that probably puts me off playing more than once a week is, is just the fact that in the week, you know, no, normal times you'll finish work, you get home, and then you haven't got that much longer of the evening left, really, sometimes. So, um, yeah, doing it on a... On a Saturday or Sunday morning makes complete sense if that's uh, something you can get going that'd be really good 
Yeah, and also down at Summerdale as well. They've got obviously a lot of football on on the weekends, you know, be it Saturday, Sunday leagues. Um, so that's another avenue whereby, you know, there's going to be smaller kids and there's going to be um, potentially partners, you know, ladies, et cetera, um, having a coffee or having a drink. So, you know, introducing them to the table in a more relaxed environment, in a in a sort of different session, if you like, or just putting it out the table outside, um, you know, might think that, you know, they can actually play this sport as well, which, you know, they certainly can, you know. So that's another yeah, yeah, thing yeah, could do. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I think that's everything today, Dave. Um, have you got any more sort of closing remarks or do you want to run through point by point how you beat me last year? Well, I could do, but I don't, I don't know if we've got the, the time, really. I've got, I've got a few little trophies. <laughs> like I said, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find, I've got the, obviously, the trophy cabinet behind me, but um, yeah. I, I found these, uh, what were these? They're all, they're, annoyingly, all the ones I found are runner-ups. <laughs> but, they, but they're all uh, the key centre ones, which is quite nice. And I, I couldn't find the old boys' league ones, but um, yeah, but, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and dig them out for next time. Well, yeah, and I'll, I'll go and Google what the boys' brigade is now, you know, so I can educate myself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's cool, right? Well, um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, you know, thanks for coming on as well, Dave. You know, make, yeah, if you've liked this sort of chat and you know it's given you a bit of value, then please do you know like subscribe. Um, really mean the world to me if you could and also leave any comments for me and dave um down below um yeah just keep the chat going about table tennis really um you know this is the fifth sort of uh table tennis chats that i've done and i think it's brought a lot of value to sort of not just local bath people but you know wider sort of table tennis community and non-table tennis community to see what we're all about and introduce you know a couple of characters so there's definitely a feature i'm going to continue um but yeah, really need your, your love and support behind us. So yeah, appreciate um, if you could, you know, leave a comment or share it around anybody, you know, on Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram. I don't know how you do the other sort of trendy Snapchats and uh, TikToks and stuff. I don't think we should start dancing because it'd be a bit weird. But anyway, I've been Mark. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers, Dave. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Mark. See ya. <laughs>